what's up guys and welcome back to the channel I'm Andy the middle-aged gamer and this is the TTI sand viper from army armament this is an absolutely gorgeous pistol absolutely stunning to look at when Terran Butler released it last summer in the real steel world and I saw it for the first time on demo ranch oh my god I was in love already and then when I heard that they're doing the pit viper for John Wick 4 which I can't wait for um, you know, I was so excited because they're virtually the same gun. The only difference is one is optics cut and the other one is iron sights only. Now, the obvious other is the color. One black, this is a lovely bronze copper look and I do like this over the black. The black is generic and we've seen too many black guns out there. Seeing something like this is beautiful. Now, it's been an absolutely awesome few weeks of looking at after this gun and shooting it around. I was quite impressed. Disappointed, but not really in some spots. So let's get into it. Let's take a look at this awesome pistol. Now I went for the optics version, or the kit that came with the optic to be exact. It was 116 pounds from www.wgcshop.com. Um, it's a Hong Kong based company. They import it all over the world and they're relatively cheap at 116 pounds with the optic. You can't argue really considering it's a lot more expensive than that in other countries, including here in the UK. So I picked this one up. So let's take a look at it. We'll start with the mag, shall we? So we'll remove the mag, put the gun back here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now your magazine is virtually identical to a TM mag. I have one here as you can see other than slight differences in the feed lips the follower the fact that this one has law enforcement here on the back this one doesn't this one has a how to say copper fill valve this one has a silver this one you can tell is a maroon because it's the lower powered designed to shoot the plastic slides you can fit it will feed the rounds it will shoot the rounds it just won't cycle the slide to lock back when you try using it on this gun. This one on the other hand with the slightly higher powered valve on it will. The other difference is in the length. So if I can line these up for you, you can see just a slight little difference in length, but it's actually a big difference in the guns. For instance, if I get my DOR here, this is my Tokyo Marui DOR, slide that in, it locks. There's no wiggle, there's no play. Slide locks back. Wow, the kick with this magazine in is ridiculous. Comparing it to its original, they sound the same, but they don't feel the same. And that's due to that little valve in there that basically, how can you say, helps to cycle this aluminum slide. It's heavier than a plastic, so it needs more power in that respect. At the base plate, you have the lovely TTI logo there, which is awesome. Let's put that back in. Actually, no, we'll leave that one out for now. Keep it safe. Practice good safety. Now, starting next, you've got the new 2023 slash 2022 Magwell from TTI, his newly designed one. It's a lot more slimmer, lower profile compared to the Combat Master, which had the finger cuts here and a little bit more flared out at the back. You do feature the TTI logo here. As you can see, the grip is like the sandpaper. This is very reminiscent of their Glock TTIs. It's absolutely awesome. And yeah, this is a gorgeous gun. And the good thing about this gun, straight out of the box, the ambidextrous safety is still attached to the gun and it's not loose or rattling. So if I click that back, you can click it in, click it off, click it on. You know, and it works. There's no play, there's no slot, it's just great. Now, moving slightly forward, you've got your extended mag release, just like on the Combat Master, but this one is a steel plate or button with a steel core going through it and a aluminum shell around the outside. Is that a bad thing? Not really, because it's more kinder to your mag. You don't see the amount of wear. You just see slight amounts. That one there was done from the Combat Master. And how I can tell you that is if I grab my 
one from here. This is my Toki Marie. You can see it has the matching scar, although a lot more pronounced on this because I've had this one a lot longer. But that's because the Combat Master magazine release broke after two mags being inserted and I had to go and buy a CNC steel one. And that's a little bit more aggressive on your mags. So, yeah. Other than that, that's the only bit there. I do like the two-tone screws. You've got the black at the bottom and the copper at the top, and that's awesome. Now, moving forward, you have your wider trigger, which is quite nice. Yes, there is an adjustment screw in there, but I've never needed to use it because the trigger is absolutely awesome. As you can see here, you have a one mil. There's your wall. There's your brake. It's absolutely light as anything. And the reset is just one mil click. And you can feel it and hear it. And that's it, you're right at the wall. Click, so it's really good for follow-up shots. The grip safety only has to be engaged around about two mils of travel, and you've still got a lot more. Um, it's lovely and wide and comfortable in the hand. You've got that nice deep cut here, so you can get a nice high purchase for recoil management. And that's about it for the rear. Now, like I say, the skeletonized trigger is lovely. It's nice aluminum. You have your little bit of stipple in here and here at the front, which is gorgeous. And like I say, there's enough room there, even with your winter gloves, to get your, how would you say, finger in there with your armor plates on your knuckles and so on. You can still shoot this gun quite reliably. Moving forward, you have the more modern rail with the single slot. Why he went that way, considering the Combat Master had multiple? I don't know. I guess it's because he decided that that's exactly where it should be. Who knows? That's something only he can tell you. But underneath, if we move that out, we can flip the gun around. Let's have a look. You get the markings under here, which, from what I've seen, the majority of the Jags don't have. You've got the Terran Tactical Innovations, Model Sam Viper, and then you've got Simi Valley, California, USA. And you should have your unique... Let's see if we can get it to focus. There it goes. Unique serial number right there in a little cut. Now, you have your nice standard slide release, which is quite good. And as you can see, you can feel these deep serrations are awesome. Now, at the front, you have your lovely Viper front. As you can see, it's also threaded. Um, so if you do wish to put a tracer unit, you can get one of those male threaded tracer unit bits, adapters that will screw into the front. My tracer unit I use, the um, Spitfire, has that adapter. It's currently on the Combat Master, so maybe I'll swap it over. You can see also that the inner barrel does actually go from the outer barrel all the way through to the front here. So you get that few extra inches, oh, a few extra centimeter, as you would say, a little bit of distance just to give it a bit more FPS. It kind of needs it, this one. Um, yeah, you have your lightning cuts along the side and the top. And like I say, those serrations are just nice, positive, are able to move. And as you can see, you have that lovely dark chrome barrel, which is just gorgeous. You can see the slight wear around there as the slide's been rubbing on it. You have your Terran Tactical on this side. Now on the top, as you can see, you get the Trigicon SRO. Now this came with it, so as you can see, it says Trigicon there. Made in the USA. It's not, it's China, but hey. It is a two and a half minute of angle optic, and I can hold it. The QR code is cool. It does hold zero, and it will, I would say, be accurate. The nice rubber buttons here on the side work. So let's see if I can get a dot for you. Yep, you can see that. Lovely work. And then on the other side, you got the off. You can just switch that one off. Now, if we flip it around, you can see the Sam Viper and the TTI logo here. You can also see the engraved in TTI logo there. And there's a little Easter egg for it. It's right there on the mag release. So that is awesome. The markings on this gun is just absolutely phenomenal. I do like it. I do know that the Jag has a slightly different coloring. It's a more of a darker bronze. And like I say, from what I've seen, the markings underneath are missing. I've seen some without this or without that. It's just saying Sam Viper or some that'll have this and it's painted white, you know, just stamped on, not engraved. It's a case of your mileage may vary. Again, 
with these lower end companies there's so many different iterations all i can tell you is that the army armament one are identical so that's another reason why i went with the army armament but yeah it's absolutely gorgeous oh and you have your 9x19 there on the barrel i do love that chrome look it's quite nice okay so let's take this out and chronograph it then we can bring it back and take it down okay so we've got the chronograph set to 0.2 gram bbs i'm using green gas so let's put a few over the chronograph and let's find out right that's a low fps but considering the nozzle in this is japanese that's fine okay so we've got a target in there let's take it back to 10 meters and shoot and see what it's like Okay, apart from the couple I pulled there, this is a heavy gun and it's freezing out here today. Mm, it was about a three inch group thereabouts, maybe had a little over, but three inch group's not bad. Okay, so that was eventful and a bit of a shock, but having done some research, please don't worry about the FPS. 260 FPS average is fine because it is running currently on the Japanese nozzle. This being the official code for it is the R615B, which basically is the Japanese spec or the Asian spec as they call it. Uh, they have released the European and American nozzle um, just called the R615. It's drop in, you can grab the Jag one, they're quite easy to do. It's just remove the optic on the top. There's a screw at the back of the gun and you can, I'll show you that as we take the gun down. Now, as I can tell you, like I say, we'll take that out now. I'll put the Tokyo Maru one in. As you can see, that one locks back the first shot, full mag, but you can feel it. It's lethargic and now doesn't like to lock. This being the lower powered, it just doesn't have the punch that that does, as you can hear. This one is just way better. Now, now that we've got the hammer back and the mag out, we can pull this to its takedown point, push that through, and we should be able to get a finger in. You see, lovely pin, and slide it off. Now, one thing I have loved about this is how clean it looks. As you can see, you get the lovely shiny metallic flake in there. It's absolutely gorgeous. But you can see the rails, everything is just simplified. There is no more little, I would say, angle cuts or out like that. You can see the slight wear to the finish of the paint from the side, or the slide cycling, slight bits here around the edges. But it's so bloody smooth that you you know it's like it's gliding on ice it's just quite a nice system you've got your knocker valve or your firing pin there at the back which comes down if i click you you get your little trigger reset that goes up click you down and that goes down now these are milled aluminum pieces they're not mim so that's great they're more durable the hammer itself is aluminum as well it, doesn't need to be anything stronger because all it's doing is pushing that valve at the back. It's not needed to be absolute steel. That's just a, a lie that people like to tell you to sell you more stuff, you know, but it is really 
quite nice. It's simplified, it's quite smooth, there's less junk in there that many people used to have. There's no ridges, other resets or bits, just general bits of flex. And yeah, I do think this is absolutely awesome. I do love the mag when it's in. Although when the slides on this is tight up against the seal, like that. Um, but yeah, you have your over travel stop there at the top. It's quite nice. So let's put the slide here. We can move you back a little bit. Now, this is your main slide. It's lovely and heavy. That's the other good thing about the skin. It's so heavy that the recoil is just easy to manage. It does feature a two-part guy rod, which is held together with a grub screw. But due to this being brand new, the paint as well is holding it together. And I don't really want to break it, or else I would take that part and take the guide rod out. You just undo this screw here. Once you've undone that, you can pull this slightly forward. And if you grab onto that, you'll be able to pull this one back to the rear and it will separate it. Once you've done that, you can just take this whole thing apart and it takes down in seconds. It's quite easy to do. Now, as I can say, your nozzle is lovely. It's got a good O-ring seal on there. A bit gritty at the moment because it needs a good clean now. But if I pull this forward whoop, without knocking my camera off, <laughs> trying to do everything one-handed, you can see the flat top nozzle there. That's why you can't just fit any normal. You have to get the ones designed for this style of gun. Now, again, your mileage will vary. Everyone's mileage varies depending on who, what, why, where, what sort of, how to say, FPS you're looking for. To be honest, I'm not looking for a high FPS because I'm going to be shooting this at less than 10 meters range in CQB. You're not going to be slugging it 100 meters down the, you know, the range or what have you, outdoors. You're just not. And if you are, kudos to you, man. You can see hops are just there as well. This is standard maple leaf, uh, Marui spec. So you can use any of their inner barrels, any of their heart bookings, etc. All their parts fit. It will fit and feed all. But it's quite simple. The slide just goes back on quite nice. You can pull it back to its takedown point, pop your pin in, and we'll do a quick function check. It is just gorgeous. I do love that look, and that kick is quite satisfactory. So, yeah, she's an absolutely gorgeous pistol. Low FPS. I have actually ordered the higher FPS nozzle just to give that one a try. It literally takes two seconds. In fact, I forgot to show you. If I pull that down, there is a screw right there. You take your optic off. There's two little screws at the top here. Take them off. Drop out the, re the nozzle return spring. It literally just plops out the top. And then take your slide off, and you will find that when you unscrew that screw, the whole nozzle unit drops out, and you can just swap it out with no problem whatsoever. It's very, very simple. It takes literally less than two minutes to do. It's as long as it takes you to unscrew those screws, and that's about it. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, you know, if you want a higher FPS, you can do that. Or you can do what everyone else does and just buy New Pro 3.0 and it will run at a higher FPS. I have some of that on the way. So if you would like to see that in a video, see what that does, let me know in the comments. That's not a problem. You know, it's absolutely awesome. I do love this. I have every respect for army armament now. The fact that those magazines are only £20 a piece when the Tokyo Maru ones are nearly 30 or just above 30 depending on where you're going and when they have them in stock, plus shipping, and you're getting more FPS out of your, uh, you know, DORs or your 5.1s, your gold matches and that, more magazine space inside for gas... To me, it's a no-brainer, right, guys? You should be going for the Army Armament ones. They fit better. They don't rattle. They look nicer, you know? So, yeah. And they do go in black as well, as in black base plate. If you're interested in that one, I'd look them in. And try them out in yours and see what you think. I've been a been middle-aged gamer. This has been the TTI Sand Viper, and you guys have been absolutely amazing. I'll see you in the next one.